So, did Jennifer Aniston really get fillers? That's the question on everyone's mind. Today, we're diving in the world of facial fillers, what they are, how they work, and whether they actually migrate and cause that dreaded pillow face. But before you make any decisions, you want to stick around for this one. Bingo fillers are a popular choice for those looking to correct asymmetry, smooth out fine lines and wrinkles, restore loss of volume, and even treat indented scars. They are versatile, can address a range of concerns, and if you are in your mid-twenties, this could actually be a good time to start thinking about fillers. It's about prevention and maintaining a youthful appearance rather than trying to reverse the clock later on. Let's talk about where fillers are most commonly used. For instance, we have nasolabial fillers that help us fill the depressed folds between the nose and the mouth. Then there are under eye fillers that can refresh your look by reducing the appearance of eye bags and tear troughs. And it doesn't stop there. Cheek fillers lift the cheeks which improves nasolabial folds and jowling, while nose fillers project and define the nose bridge and tip for a sharper profile. Lip fillers, they plump up thin lips, and chin fillers can elongate or reshape the chin. Finally, we have temple fillers that restore volume to sunken temples giving a youthful appearance. Not all fillers are the same. We typically use two main types, hyaluronic acid or HA fillers which are known for their ability to hydrate and add volume, and collagen stimulating fillers like Radiase, Elance, Sculptra and Estafil. These work by stimulating your body's natural collagen production over time, providing more long-lasting results. Unfortunately, fillers can be overdone leading to excessive fullness, a lack of facial balance and that swollen look. Sometimes, fillers injected to certain parts of the face may migrate and you may look different from the initial results of your filler injections. If you had fillers done before and aren't happy with the results, let us help you. It's crucial to choose a doctor who prioritizes your results instead of making you do excessive fillers. And that's where we come in. For those with overfilled cheeks, overly high nose bridges or lumpy under eye areas, we can use hyaluronidase or hyalase injections to dissolve the fillers. However, not all fillers can be dissolved, especially permanent or semi-permanent ones. It's also important to know that some people might be allergic to hyalase injections. I often use a Botox needle for hyalase injections. This is the thinnest needle available so it hardly leaves any marks. In fact, the most common side effect from hyalase injections is bruising because multiple injections need to be done and there will be a lot of massaging to spread out the hind lace under the skin. Such bruises are usually small and will heal quickly. Bruising also does not affect the results. You can apply an ice pack or use certain creams to help the bruise heal better. If you are unhappy with your existing fillers, do consult our doctors who will advise if you are a suitable candidate for dissolving the filler and benefit from retreatment. Before we conclude, Let's address some of the viral TikToks floating around about fillers. Right, this is a viral video and it's trending. I've seen this video before. So basically it says that a lady who has only 12 cc's of fillers injected in her face went for an MRI scan years later and the MRI scan reveals that there is actually 28 cc's of fillers in her face. And that's quite shocking because you know how did the amount of fillers more than double I'm not surprised that you know fillers can last for so long because they can actually absorb water and recent studies have actually shown that the fillers last a bit longer than what the manufacturers claim to be. So I'm actually quite happy that more new research is coming out because this will help us doctors improve our technique and our skill and our decision making on how to inject fillers. One other thing to note is that MRI just differentiates between water and fat. One possibility is that, you know, maybe this lady has have been having a bit of water retention in the face or you know it's that time of the month, the hormones causing some water retention and so some water is, you know, surrounding the fillers and that gives the impression that there is more fillers than what was injected. That's hard to say. The only way is to do a few series of MRIs at different times of the week so that we know whether is it truly 28cc of fillers or sometimes the water that comes and goes. Well, but the most important thing is that we as doctors need to keep on updating and learning new information so that we can deliver the results that our patients love all the time. Okay, that's Kylie Jenner right there. And yes, I can see that there's some swelling and lumpiness around her eyes. 
just under her eyes. And this is a very good example of overfilled tear troughs and overfilled under eyes, which is a common issue when too much filler is used in that area. You know, the area under our eyes is very delicate and it's very complex. The skin is thin. There are many different pockets where we can inject the fillers into. And so we really need to be very experienced and very careful in how and where we inject the fillers into the under eyes. Too much and it looks very unnatural and lumpy and it's very easy to overfill this area. But when done correctly, it can produce beautiful results. You know, it can even flatten the eye bags, flatten the tear troughs and make you look much more refreshed and don't give you that sleepy, tired look which everyone dreads. Okay, so this lady is saying that She's done fillers to her nasal labial folds and she doesn't like it. It looks stiff, it looks unnatural, and she got them dissolved, in fact. So I've personally seen this problem quite a lot too, where nasal labial folds are overfilled. So we need to understand that uh, the entire face works together as a whole. When there's a problem with a nasal labial folds, when it's too deep, it's not just an issue of the nasal labial fold itself. It's a uh, issue of the entire face where there's sagging and there's drooping. So we should not be just targeting the nasal labial folds and putting too much fillers there. Otherwise, we get this kind of very unnatural look. It may even elongate your upper lip and make it droop, make it a bit too thick and, you know, put crudely can make you look like a monkey. And that's not great. In fact, we should start with putting fillers on the cheeks, on the temples to give your face the lift. And by lifting, the nasal labial folds actually become less. So if you find that your nasal labial folds have been overfilled, do consult us and we'll let you know if high lace injections and redoing your fillers is necessary. Sometimes I might even suggest to combine with energy-based devices such as lasers, RF or even HIFU to give an entire face lift and give you more natural and long-lasting results. So should you get fillers? Absolutely if it's right for you and done by the right hands. Remember, fillers can offer amazing results, but it's all about moderation and technique. If you are considering fillers or need help with previous treatments, we're here to help you every step of the way.